Americans for Prosperity, the National Review, the Des Moines Register, host tonight our moderators, this great audience, and I also want to thank the candidates that are here on stage. Um, we have some wonderful candidates. But thank you so much again for being here. I have seen firsthand what happens when a government controls jobs and the economy. economy. When I was at Iowa State University, I had the opportunity to travel to the Soviet Union. And while I was in the Soviet Union, I saw a government that controlled jobs, the economy, and absolutely every aspect of their citizens' lives. And it was so abhorrent to me that when I returned to Iowa State University, I was compelled to join Army ROTC and put on the uniform to defend the values that I believe made this nation great and to stop what I saw happening in the Soviet Union from ever happening here at home. And today I can tell you that I am alarmed by what I am seeing in our nation. This president's policies are dangerous and they threaten us and they threaten the values that I hold dear. I have worn the uniform for over 20 years, and it has been my honor to stand with thousands of men and women who have served to defend this nation, to make sure that their children are inheriting the same great nation that we inherited. I am tonight humbly asking for your support to be your next United States Senator. My name is Joni Ernst. I'm a Republican. I'm running for Senate. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joni. David Young. Well, you had a chance to hear from all the candidates tonight. If you remember one thing about David Young, I hope it's this. I don't want to go to Washington for incremental change. I want to take on Washington with a big stick. You know, we're saddened with a government that believes that dealing with the debt crisis is to erect barricades to prevent veterans from seeing their war memorials. We're saddened with the prospect of Obamacare increasing premiums with less choice, causing hundreds of thousands of Americans to be shifted from full-time to part-time work, adding to another and always larger astronomical debt. We're saddled with a government that doesn't have the common sense to find its way out of this mess. As Senator, as Senator Grassley, Chief of Staff, I know the importance of bringing Iowa's common sense and conservative values to Washington. I've seen the dysfunction of government, and I know how to fix it. You know, Senator Grassley does his 99 county tour every year. I just finished my sweep of visiting with Iowans, the voters, and my 99 county tour, and I'll be back to do it again. I'll work hard, take your values to Washington, and I will rest until we turn this mess around. I would love your support. Thank you. Thank you, David. Matt Winter. Thank you to our sponsors, AFP, the National Review, the Des Moines Register, the moderators did a great job. My fellow Republican candidates, thank you for being here. I know everyone in this room agrees with me that anyone on this stage is better than Bruce Braley. Bruce Braley, who gave you, Bruce Braley who gave you cap and trade, TARP, bailout, stimulus, Obamacare, cash for clunkers, and I'm sure I forgot a few. But we need to find a candidate that can not only beat Bruce Braley, but can go to Washington, D.C. and stand for the ideals and the ideas that we talked about here tonight. This is a wonderful discussion we just had about some of the solutions to our nation's largest challenges. And they include the recipe that we've known throughout our nation's history, and that is lower taxes, reasonable regulation, a sound and stable currency, and a brighter future for our children. For 237 years of our nation's history, not one day, not a single day, not even today, has the strength of our nation been our government. The strength of our nation has been everyone in this room we the people, and I will restore that 
back to our government in Washington, D.C., where they're disconnected from the real people here in Iowa. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you, Matt. Scott Shea. Thank you very much. I want to thank everybody here in attendance tonight for taking time out of their night to attend this, to, to attend this uh, debate and forum tonight. I'd like to thank all of those at home that are watching this streaming online for taking a break from trying to access healthcare.gov to actually watch this. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Sorry, I even laughed at that one. I <laughs> when you finally do log off of this website and you do try, and try to get back into the healthcare.gov website, I do want you to go home and when you finally do get through, I want you to compare what you have now to what you're being offered. Is your plan better than what you have now? Is it a better value than what you have now? Is it going to cost you less money than before? If those answers are no, you know what to do. You're going to have to vote Republican come, to, come November of 2014. <clears throat> I'd also like to, I'd also, when you go home tonight, I'd like you to look at the value of the money that our government spends. We're currently spending $3.6 trillion. There's a little over 300 million people in our country. Just doing quick math, you're looking at about 12 thousand dollars that our federal government is spending for every man, woman, and child in this country. Are you getting the value out of it? Can you actually say that your taxes are contributing to your portion of the twelve thousand dollars for every person in your household? That's a lot of money. We need to cut some of our spending. We need to get it in line. We need to start giving people value for the twelve thousand dollars that we're spending on them. And lastly, I'd like to thank everybody else that's been watching at home and allow them to go back to the World Series game. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Sam Thomas. Thanks to everyone here tonight. This is all about you, the people of Iowa, and the people of this nation. I want to leave you with one thought. The next senator from the United States, for the United States Senate from Iowa, must be a person that you can trust, someone you can depend on, someone you know will have your back. I wear a ring on my hand that is given to me by my father. He bought this ring when he entered the United States Air Corps in 1941. And when I entered the United States Air Force in 1967, my father handed me this ring. He says, I want you to have a token of my service and what it means to serve this nation. I had that ring on me every day I was a cadet and every mission I flew in the United States Air Force for 25 years. I had this ring with me along with the New Testament that my mother had given me. I never left the ground without this ring and that testament. The next senator of the United States that you're going to have from the state of Iowa must be a person who understands the notion of service. This ring was put away when I retired from the service, and recently I was asked to go down and find some memorabilia, and I found this ring and I found that New Testament. And my wife, Charlotte, who's here with us tonight, said, Sam, you need to take that ring and get it fixed and take it with you. Because you need something to remind you of the service that you have given this nation and the service you have yet to give. I want to tell you all one thing, why I don't think my head will ever get turned when I go to Washington, D.C., and it's the way I close every speech. I've been twice the speed of sound. I've seen the curve of the earth, and I've been a thousand miles an hour this far off the ground, and I'm married to the love of my life. They have nothing in Washington to offer me that I do not already have. I'm Sam Close. Thank you very much, and I hope I get your support. Thank you, Sam, and we'll finish with Paul Lennon. Again, I want to thank all the sponsors and all, all of you who came, because you took time out to come to this meeting, and I hope to send you home with a good feeling. A good feeling is this. No matter which of us wins the nomination, you will have a good senator. No question about it. These are nice folks. I've gotten to be friends with them. We're all friends. Okay. Having said that, <laughs> what makes me ask for your support, especially? Okay. I'm going to give you something no one else will give you. No one. No one, 
A free book. That is. You can open a book, you go home, you get it on your computer, you can open a book, and you can see exactly what I'm proposing to do. You can read it word for word, because if I'm elected, that is exactly what I will do. I will introduce a balanced budget amendment that will really work. We will stop deficit spending. And you may say, well, how am I going to get all that done? Well, <laughs> I have to be nice to Democrats. Seriously, I have to be nice to Democrats. I need about 30 Democratic votes to get those amendments through the United States Senate. Remember, two-thirds vote. You have to be nice to Democrats. But I can be nice to Democrats. I wrote a book, it was published last year, called Roosevelt's War, and I said a lot of nice things about President Franklin D. Roosevelt. He was a great president. But we don't have Franklin D. Roosevelt now. We have other folks who maybe aren't so nice. Please look at my book, Meltdown, Second Revised Edition. It's in the book. Thank you, Mr. <laughs>